Hi, welcome to the second trial at teaching you how to do lenses. Shout out to Madison Taylor for picking up on my mistake on the first video. Thank goodness. So we're going to try this again. Um, you have equations on your equation sheet from mirrors, which we did mirrors in the last chapter. You probably don't remember, but we're going to do lenses this time. And so what you should have looked at on the PowerPoint is that lenses will produce images as well. And all of the letters stay the same in the equation. So F is still the focal length and XO is where the object is placed, and XI is where the image shows up, and M stands for magnification. The only differences are, um, has to do with the different kinds of lenses, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first I wanna show you a trick. Um, this is an arrow, and it's pointing to your left. And this is gonna act like a lens. It's a transparent substance, and it's got water in it, and it's a glass from my kitchen. And notice that the orientation of the arrow is now flip-flopped. This is magic. This is how I get the ninth graders to give me their lunch money. Anyway, that's, that's it. Okay. So now we're going to do the math. And I have made up a sample problem. And I'm going to try to do the math correctly this time. But it deals with these equations. Where F is the focal length. And XO is where the object is located. And XI is where the image shows up. M is the magnification. Is it going to be bigger than the actual object? Is it going to be smaller than the actual object? The negative here means that it's either going to be right side up or upside down or inverted. And the difference in this has to do with the different types of lenses. So the different types of lenses, and these are an over-exaggeration of drawing them. Convex lens means that it's thicker in the middle than it is at either end, like a, a teardrop shape, I guess. And if that's the case, if it says it's a convex lens or it's a converging lens, that just means it brings the light together like a um, magnifying glass, then you're gonna have a positive focal length. If, on the other hand, the problem says that it's a concave lens or diverging, that means that the light actually scatters as it goes on the other side. It can still produce an image, though. It's just not a real image. And that's going to have a negative focal length. Anything as the light comes in, we always pretend that the light comes in from left to right. And so if the light comes in and goes on the other side and produces an image on this side, that's what we say is supposed to happen. So those are all going to be positive values. If, on the other hand, you have light coming in and then image forms on the same side that the light um, came in at or entered the lens, that's usually going to make, it is going to make um, an imaginary um, uh, image. Not imaginary. <laughs> it's not real. Um, the light is not actually transferring or passing through that particular point. Then we give that a negative connotation. So that's how we're going to do these problems. I've made up one sample problem where we're going to find out everything. Let me make sure I don't have it mixed up with the chemistry. So keep my equation sheet out. This is the problem. And I've already labeled some of the things. So an object is placed 32 centimeters from a convex lens. The things in purple are the important things. So the object is placed 32 centimeters. That's XO. So XO is the 30, 32 centimeters from a convex lens. The convex lens tells us that this focal length is going to be positive. So this is our focal length, and it stays positive. And we want to know where's the image. That's XI. And they're telling us that the object is 3 centimeters high. That's the height of the object. They want to know how tall is the image. That's HI. And then they want to know the orientation, just like the arrow flipping back and forth. So we're going to take the equations that I just discussed, and we're going to use them to figure out the answers. So I have an object that is 32 centimeters from a converging or convex lens. And that convex lens has a focal length of eight centimeters. I also know that the object is three centimeters tall or high. That's where the HO comes from. And what do they wanna know? They wanna know XI and they wanna know the height of the image. So first I'm gonna use the lens equation. One over F equals one over XO plus one over XI. Now. If this focal length were for a diverging or a concave lens, I would make it negative. It's not gonna be negative in the problem. I have to know to make it negative, but not for this one. I can either do a little bit of algebra or I can put the numbers in first. I'm gonna do a little bit of algebra. One over F minus one over XO equals one over XI. Then I'm gonna stick my numbers in. One over eight centimeters. Also, these are all in centimeters. I can leave them all in centimeters. If they were all in meters, I could leave them all in meters. I just have to make sure that they're all the same. So one over eight centimeters minus one over 32 centimeters 
equals one over the answer that I'm looking for, the placement of the image. So I just take my calculator. I use my reciprocal key, eight to the negative one minus 32 to the negative one. And I get an answer, but that's not really my answer. I need to remember to reciprocate that as well. And I get 10.7. So the image is going to show up on the other side of the lens. So if I have a lens and I have an object over here, and this is going to be 32 centimeters, then the image is going to show up over here on this side, 10.7 meters away. Remember, everything is measured with respect to the lens. The second thing they want to know is how high is the image? Well, according to the other equation, HI over HO equals negative XI, that's what I'm looking for, divided by XO. So I cross multiply, I divide by HO, and I remember to keep the negative. So then I just plug in numbers. All I did was I cross multiplied, and I divided by HO to get XI by itself. I have the negative one. I just did it in one step. And then I put numbers in. So HI, oh, I did it backwards. I'm looking for HO. Okay. Let's try again. <laughs> so HI is what I'm looking for. I already know XI. That's what I figured out in the last part. Negative XI over XO. This is what I'm looking for. So I cross multiply HI times XO equals negative XI times HO. That's just cross multiplication. Then I divide both sides by XO. And now... Let's see if I can get it right this time. Negative XI. XI is what I figured out in the last problem. That's where the image is going to be located. So that's my 10.7 centimeters. I multiply that by the height of the object. That was given in the problem. The object is 3 centimeters high. Divided by the placement of the object, also given in the problem, 32 centimeters. One of the centimeters will cancel out. I take 10.7 times 3 and divide it by 32, and I get 1. So the image is only going to be one centimeter high, which is why I kind of drew the picture like this. It's smaller. Magnification can make things smaller. It's going to be one third as big as the actual one, and it's going to appear on that side. And it's going to be a real ob... Oh, no, it's not. Negative. That's the orientation part. Negative means upside down. So I should correct my little sample here for you. It should be upside down and one third as big. And that means it's a real object. Virtual objects are um, going to be the same size, or the same orientation. This has opposite orientation. That's how you're going to do all these problems. The hardest thing is figuring out whether it's converging or diverging, convex or concave, and then you have to follow um, the rules for sign. So we'll probably have a Zoom um, meeting on this if you need help with this, um, but the, I will upload this, and this isn't going to be due until Friday.